The Asus ProArt PX13 is one of the best laptops we've ever used. Full stop, end of story. This laptop is a somewhat miracle device, delivering jaw-dropping performance in a tiny, very portable 13-inch form factor. The last video that we published on this channel was so intense that my MacBook Pro 16 with the M2 Max chip literally could not edit it without stuttering. But this little ProArt could. And if you think it gets super hot and loud, like you'd expect from shoving crazy high-end components inside a small Windows laptop, think again. Its fan noise and heat under load are pretty similar to much larger laptops. And in light use, this ProArt was dead silent and felt cool to the touch. This is partly due to Asus using one of AMD's latest Zen 5 processors, which I believe are currently the best processor that you can get in a Windows laptop. If all that isn't enough for you, it's a very premium device that gives you about 95% of what a MacBook Pro does, and in some cases, much more. It's a two-in-one, you can run Linux on it and play AAA games on it with its dedicated graphics. But like all laptops right now, there are gotchas. Its display is only 60 hertz. I get it. Asus is trying to differentiate this as a creator laptop from their gaming ones. It's annoying as there are plenty of creators like us who enjoy gaming on the side. Heck, just scrolling through a web page would look smoother on a faster refresh rate display. Also, its MediaTek Wi-Fi 7 card sucks, but it is replaceable. And battery life is mediocre. There are a few other gotchas too. So with that said, here is Sierra to walk you through the details starting with performance. These new AMD Zen 5 chips perform very well. In Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, the HX370 in the ProArt gets the top score of comparable laptops, but still trails slightly behind Apple's M3 Pro chip. In Cinebench, which tests the processors under max load, the ProArt performs the same as Intel's latest Core Ultra 9 CPU in the IdeaPad 5 Pro. Keep in mind, that is a much larger 16-inch laptop. Both of them are behind the Mac in single core, but around the same in multi-core. Something to note with these graphs is that the MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro chip is similarly specced to the ProArt we have, but significantly more expensive. The ProArt also maintains its stellar performance in a 10-minute torture test, which is great to see. And it's not just raw performance that makes these new AMD chips so special, it's their power efficiency. Taking a look at their performance per watt, these are significantly ahead of laptops with Intel's latest processors, as well as AMD's prior generation. Over that same sustained 10-minute test, this laptop's processor has a similar max power draw as the IdeaPad's Core Ultra, but averages 16 watts less power. As far as the heat you feel goes, Asus has done a great job with cooling the ProArt. In demanding applications, which is what this laptop is designed for, it feels warm, but it's still in a comfortable range, especially considering this is a tiny laptop. Under max load, the fans are loud and noticeable, but they are not the loudest that we've heard. When the fans run, they are slightly high-pitched, so you may notice them more than other laptops of similar volume. But on the flip side, in real-world use, we found the fan noise was quieter than the graphs would indicate. When both Josh and Taylor were video editing, the fans would spin up when doing something tough like playing a complex timeline, but the moment they stopped, the fans would quickly turn off. Now, in light use, when I was writing this script for this video, the laptop was dead silent and felt only slightly warm. Compared with Asus's own Zephyrus G14, we measured this one at 2 degrees Celsius cooler where you would have your hands. That laptop is larger, so this is a great result for the ProArt. Which brings us to another thing we love about this laptop. It's got dedicated graphics. The version we have is the lower tier model equipped with an RTX 4050, but there is also a 4060 version available. This one's GPU is fed higher wattage than the other 4050s we've tested at 95 watts. The maximum recommended without boost is 100 watts, so it's not far from its full capabilities here. This makes it perform so well that it beats some 4060s, like the low wattage one in the HP Omen Transcend. To test how it performs in games, I played Final Fantasy XIV with some friends and a few rounds of Fortnite. I set them to the display's native resolution and ran them at low settings. They stuck to around 60 FPS consistently, making them enjoyable to play on a 60 Hz screen. If I had lowered the resolution, I could have upped the game settings. The fan noise was loud throughout, if that bothers you, but I had the same experience with the G14, and I found that laptop's fan noise to be more high-pitched and annoying. Overall, if you are interested in gaming, we'd recommend considering the 4060 version. But keep in mind, your screen will max out at 60 Hz, so the 4060 may not make a difference for you if you are just playing less demanding games. For those of you who are creators, the 13.3-inch 2880 by 1800 OLED screen looks fantastic. It has a crisp 255 PPI and is also very color accurate. It covers 100% of the sRGB and P3 color gamut and 95% of Adobe RGB. One downside is that its brightness is a little lower than we normally like at 380 nits. It's not bad for an OLED, but it may not be the easiest to see in a bright environment. And it definitely won't be visible outdoors, which is also due to its glossy finish, which shows reflections even at higher brightness. Its screen door effect is minimal, and PWM, or pulse width modulation flickering, is only detectable at lower brightness settings. 
It is also a touchscreen, which is comfortable to use in both tablet and laptop mode thanks to the strength of its hinges. One downside is that the pen is bought separately, which is disappointing for a two-in-one at this price point. This increases the price you're paying by $100 if you want one. It's also another thing to remember to carry with you. Speaking of portability, this is shockingly light for a device with dedicated graphics, coming in at 1,392 grams, which is barely over three pounds. With the charger, it's only about 4.3. It's clearly a well-built device, as screen and deck flex are minimal. It also can be opened with one hand. Overall, we found it quite comfortable to use, with its rounded edges that didn't cut into our wrists when typing. On that note, we all really liked the keyboard. It has a standard layout besides the Copilot key, and its 1.7 millimeter key travel felt solid for a laptop this size. Some of us found it a little squishy or gummy, if that bothers you, but it does lead to a quieter typing experience. The single zone backlight is very bright, which works well even though the font on the keys is quite thin. The trackpad feels as premium and as precise as you're going to get for a mechanical one. However, it is not as good as the latest haptic trackpads we've tried from Apple or Microsoft. You do lose a little accuracy when clicking. I usually use the single tap to click or other gestures like zoom and scroll, all of which worked great. The trackpad includes the Asus Style Pad, which is meant to help functionality in creativity, productivity, and entertainment applications. In practice, we didn't find it very useful. For functions such as zooming on a Photoshop project or Premiere Pro timeline, it was consistently laggy. Plus, the speed at which it scrolled through just didn't feel natural. It seemed to need a lot of tuning that you couldn't adjust in its configuration settings. Fortunately, it's easy to turn off if you don't want to use it. Now, we'll switch over to sound and take a quick moment to show you how the speakers sound on the ProArt. <laughs> Overall, we feel the speakers get loud enough, the sound is fairly clear, and there is some bass, which makes it one of the better speakers we've tried in a small laptop. Compared to the MacBook Pro 14, the speakers in that laptop sound louder, and it just has a more powerful soundstage and a fuller sound. Next, let's move on to ports. Starting on the left, we have a dedicated charging port, HDMI 2.1, USB-C 4.0 Gen 3, and a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack. On the right, we have a power button, micro SD card reader, USB-A 3.2 Gen 2, and another USB-C 4.0. This means that it supports USB-C charging on both sides of the laptop, which is always nice to see. One point of concern is the power button's placement on the side below the ports. It can be easy to accidentally press. For example, Taylor said he turned off the laptop once when he was plugging something into the left side because he was bracing the laptop's right side. Another point of concern is that the ports themselves are placed quite far down each side of the device. This may lead to cords getting in the way of things like a mouse, which you may want to use on this laptop because the trackpad isn't perfect. As far as connectivity goes, this comes with Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, but one of the downsides of this laptop is its Wi-Fi card. It uses a MediaTek one whose cards have been known for Wi-Fi issues. This unfortunately carries across here. On one occasion when opening the laptop, the Wi-Fi was turned on, but no network could be found. Another time during a game of League of Legends, Josh experienced massive ping spikes. These were alleviated by plugging the device into our network via an ethernet dongle. So luckily Josh informed us that he plugged it in in time and he still won the game. Hopefully in the future this can be fixed with a driver update. A slither of good news is that the Wi-Fi card is replaceable. Opening the laptop is a bit challenging with the middle screw underneath a glued plug. We were able to pry it off using the toolset listed below this video. Other than the Wi-Fi card, the SSD and battery are upgradable. The memory is soldered, but considering that both the 4050 and 4060 versions come with 32 gigs of RAM, that's probably not going to be an issue for most people. Performance on battery is about 80% of its performance plugged in, but its scores still aren't bad by any means. To test battery life under a performance load, we ran Cinebench for 30 minutes. It had 46% battery remaining. In light use, we played a Netflix movie on repeat for four hours. It had 58% battery remaining there. To test real world light use after seeing these results, I unplugged the laptop to write the script. I found that it would last around an eight hour workday, which lines up closely with our Netflix test. In so many other categories, this laptop feels like an easy, on-the-go device, but battery life is a bit disappointing. You'll probably want to carry a charger with you. We'd recommend getting a more compact USB-C one if you plan to take it with you and you don't need the more powerful graphics during those times. Please note, we ran these battery tests in eco mode, which is meant to turn off the dedicated graphics. But compared to other laptops with a similar processor and sized battery, this one did worse, indicating that perhaps it is still drawing some power. Hopefully Asus can address this with a driver or firmware update. We didn't notice any instabilities while using the laptop. And because these AMD processors run x86 instructions, all Windows applications just work. The 4050 version comes in at $1,700 and the 4060 right at 2000. 
These definitely aren't budget picks, but the price is about what we would expect for this kind of device, especially when, for creators, it's competitive with a $2,300 MacBook Pro 14. Out of the hundreds of laptops we have here, this is the first one that I'm personally considering buying for myself. I use creative apps like Photoshop and Illustrator. I like taking notes with a pen for my poetry and writing work. And I want to have a laptop strong enough in graphics to play multiplayer games like Fortnite or Final Fantasy XIV. This laptop covers all of the bases for me, and I've never seen a device quite like it. If it sounds like it checks a lot of boxes for you too, be sure to buy through our website. You'll be supporting the channel, which allows us to make more videos like this. Plus, our website is the place to find all the laptops we recommend for different types of shoppers, as well as where to go to get the best deals on them. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and we will catch you later.